Hi, my name is Wesley Jennings. I am a staff archaeologist for the Jamestown Rediscovery Foundation. Uh, today, for this exciting episode of Dig Deeper, I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, historical archaeology, an important aspect of which is the use of historical documentary evidence to complement our research and field excavations. Uh, for my projects for the past couple weeks, I've been translating letters from the APVA's early years uh, regarding the tombstones of the graveyard and other landscaping activities. Historical archaeology is the archaeology of events that occur after the appearance of a written record within the area of interest. For example, if one were interested in examining ancient Rome or ancient Egypt, those written records might date back to a few thousand years before the Common Era. For us at the Jamestown Rediscovery Foundation, these written records date back to around 1607 with the arrival of the first colonists from England. These written records often provide an important insight into the social organization, the personal behaviors, and events that otherwise don't leave a material footprint that we can find archaeologically through our excavations. Uh, it is important to note, however, that we do not ignore the archaeology of cultures that did not have these written records. Uh, we are trained professionals, after all. We are trained to examine and understand these material findings no matter what cultures they originate from. After all, the goal of historical archaeology, like all other types of archaeology, is to understand the lives of historic peoples. Sometimes during our excavations out in the field, we might come across a feature related to some activity that we can't really explain. Uh, hopefully, of course, there is a document from that time period with an observation regarding that activity. For example, uh, regarding some of the modern planting holes that we found at the site, uh, we have letters from the APVA detailing hedges and rows of corn that they planted. Uh, likewise, we also see a note, an observation from the Confederate Army that was stationed at Fort Pocahontas regarding human remains being uncovered by the erosion of the island. Uh, of course, uh, Fort Pocahontas was directly over James Fort, and if you visit the island today, you will see that the southwestern corner of the fort has been impacted by the James River. And within that corner, we do have a small burial ground that has also been impacted. Some of the documentary evidence we use includes letters and other correspondences, journals, newspaper articles, uh, official reports, and books written from that time period. And one of the important things about examining these documents is trying to find references to other sources. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't always easy. Uh, many documents become missing, lost, or damaged. Uh, for example, during the Civil War, many libraries and offices would uh, suffer fire damage, and we lost a great deal of information that way, information that could have been potentially very helpful. Uh, we also see references in books uh, to texts that otherwise don't exist anymore. During my research into the tombstones of the graveyard associated with the 1617 church, as well as the later brick churches, I was directed to a book titled The Cradle of the Republic by Lion Gardner Tyler in 1906. In this work, Tyler describes some of the engravings found on the tombstones within the graveyard, as well as describing some of the recent landscaping activity on the island, including the construction of a concrete seawall for the purpose of mitigating erosion of the shoreline, as well as the beginning of construction for the Brick Memorial Church, still seen today. Uh, more importantly for myself, however, he also makes a reference to a work by Bishop William Mead uh, regarding old churches, ministers, and families, published in the mid 1800s In his work, Bishop Mead also describes the engravings of the tombstones, uh, but he also mentions the history of the island and an event in 1807 when visitors came to celebrate the 200th anniversary of colonists arriving at Jamestown. Uh, these visitors uh, played a sort of event where they went into the graveyard trying to find the oldest tombstone. And these visitors describe how a tree grew between two of these tombstones, 
and partially damaged them, most likely a reference to the tombstones of James and Sarah Blair. The majority of my work for the past couple of weeks has been reading and translating letters and correspondences between members of the APVA in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Within these letters, they describe the tombstones and the activities they performed on them, such as moving, repairing, and cleaning them. They also describe landscaping activities such as rebuilding the Ambler Cemetery wall, leveling out the land, planting hedges and corn, as well as the installation of a breakwater to help mitigate the erosion of the shoreline, but this falls into disrepair and is replaced by a concrete seawall. As you can see, the historical archaeology that we conduct can provide very important insight behind some of the motivations for these historic activities that we can see archaeologically as features in the ground. Uh, a very good example of this would be for the Memorial Church excavations. In the late 1800s, the APVA performed archaeological excavations in that area in order to do preservation work for the brick church tower from the 1670s. Uh, from the letters of the APVA, we can see the methods they use for excavation, the reasons why they use those methods, and what they observed and found along the way, which helped us out greatly for our own excavations in that same spot only a few years ago. These historic documents can provide us with information that might not be found anywhere else, and can help fill in the gaps of our knowledge or provide details that we might have overlooked otherwise. Uh, likewise, our excavations out in the field can help verify the accuracy of these reports, as well as filling in the gaps of what they might have observed but not uh, immediately understood. So I think that's about all I have for you guys on this episode of Dig Deeper. I hope you learned a lot about how historic documents and our excavation today go hand in hand and provide insight for what you and I see on the island today. I uh, hope you all stay safe and have a great day.